All right, um, yeah, uh, rooted, rooted in Christ, you can pray. Good evening. All right. Um, dear Heavenly Father, God, we just thank you, Lord, for um, this evening, God. We thank you for giving us this opportunity to come together um, as, you know, brothers and sisters to, you know, partake of your word, Lord. Um, Father God, I just pray for everyone that plans on tuning in tonight and anyone that's already on here. I pray that every heart is soft and Father God, that your word may fall on good ground in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, I pray for the messenger. I pray for our brother in Christ who plans on delivering your word. Lord, I pray that in this moment that he decreases, that you may increase, Father God. I pray, Lord God, that... <clears throat> River, rivers of living water flows from him, Father God. And um, I just pray, Father God, that we take this word and we just apply it to our lives in this season. Um, we thank you, Father God, in advance for the daily bread. We honor you and we ask these things in Jesus' name. I pray. Amen. 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 I, um, like I said, Early a few minutes ago, I'm gonna be giving the word. So I know I, I was told like yesterday I was gonna give the word. So I know um I guess I doubt it'd be too long, but I guess the one thing that God brought to my heart, I guess He just wanted me to speak about. It was a word He brought to me, and it was just basically discipline. Amen. Basically discipline. And even as we know, um, we heard it plenty of times and we see it um, on flyers, you know, this is the Cybership University um, where we labor to see Christ be formed in you. Um, so I think that would be, even as God told me, I think that'd be very important um, to know what discipline is. Right, it'll be very important to know what discipline is because discipline is basically the root word of discipleship. So even as it says discipleship university, um, that root word, that root word is discipline. Um, start off with start off with the definition. Just a few things. Even if you look up the word discipline. And I, even as I looked it up, a few things that that's was well, not a few things. Basic definition, a few definitions of discipline, right? Um, one is uh, self control. Um, that's in the word discipline, self control. Um, also, another definition was training that corrects, molds, or perfects moral character, right? So training that corrects. Discipline is training that corrects. So a part of being a disciple means you're being disciplined, you're being trained, and it comes with correction, right? Because none of us are perfect. So the discipline is 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 perfecting us and it's it's correcting us. It's um also, as it says, our moral character. Our moral character, right? Um also another one is um another part of the definition is um which is also a, a part of the word discipline is also they use the word, they even use the word basically uh as correction, we also know part of correction sometimes is like even as the Bible says with the children, um, don't forsake the rod. So it it, it comes with punishment, even as it's in a, a dis definition, it says punishment. And it's not a punishment in the sense of not, of course, we're talking about God. It's not a punishment in the sense of not in love. It's a punishment in the sense of in love. It's a place of correction. Um, some people, um, I know it's heard, we heard it said before, some people. Some people get a little tap on their wrist and you know, they learn from it. Some people 
the tap on the wrist is not working. And God so God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, but he gave his only begotten son, not just for us to live and to benefit here on this earth, but that our souls may be saved, that we may be, um, that our souls may be saved and that we may be with him for eternity when we do leave this body, right? So punishment is in that, that, that sense also too of discipline. It's like when you say, oh, I discipline my children. It's a, it's a, it's a form of, of punishment and not just to say pain. You're not going to say pain. Um, I know someone gave a good illustration in the sense of a, like, um, you know, you can have a children and um, you can have one child where you, you know, you're punishing them by, by uh, you know, uh, spanking them, you know, be, uh, giving them a spanking, but that doesn't work for them. But for that same child, instead of doing that, you punish them by saying, okay, no TV for a month. That's a form of punishment. So when I say punishment, please don't think it's just a place of, of you know, um, physical pain. I ain't gonna say pain, but physical pain, right? Um, so also to train or develop, like we said, by instruction, right? To train or develop by instruction, to train or develop by instruction. Discipline, all right, discipline and discipline. So we said like this is discipleship university. So these are the things of discipline. God wants to build in us self-control. All right. He wants to um he wants to discipline us. Discipline us in a, um a lot of different areas. He wants to discipline us. But as we know, as it says, discipleship university, we are called to be his disciples. Right? We are called to be his disciples. Mm -hmm. We are called to be his disciples. We are called to be his disciples. And uh, we know a disciple, where when the word came from disciple is also a follower or a student of Jesus Christ or a teacher. If you want to break it down, that's what a disciple is, a follower or a student of a teacher a follower or a student of a teacher, a follower or a student of a teacher, right? Um, a follower or a student of a teacher. Um, so we gonna, I'm gonna, we gonna, we gonna just start from I want to read from the book of John, John 6, I'll read from John 6, um, I'm going to start from, uh, we can start from John 6, well, I, I'll just read, right, John 6, um, and basically just, uh, just to sum it up, this whole the whole chapter, or just when we start from, we're gonna start from the end and go up to the beginning, right? Of this chapter. And towards the end of the chapter, it's basically Jesus um, speaking about himself, right? Speaking about himself in the sense of he is life. He is the life, he is the bread of life. Um, he is the bread of life. And even as we're called to be disciplined and we're disciples of Christ Jesus. We're disciples of Christ Jesus. We also know this Christ Jesus is what? He's the word. Christ Jesus is the word. So that would mean we'd be disciples of the word. Disciples of the word, the word of God. That's why it's so important and it's so key to read the word. That's why, it's, you know, to study, to read, to study and to learn and to have this, you know, the Bible in you, um, because also even as the you know the Bible says, the Holy Spirit brings all things into remembrance of Christ Jesus, right? But it's, He can't bring things to remembrance that you don't know. He can't bring things to remembrance of things that you do not know, right? Um, so I'm a let me. And it is, it's, um, 
this is also to um it's also i would say a place of checking it's also a place of checking or to ask yourself are you a disciple of christ jesus are you actually truly really a disciple of christ jesus right it's also um a warning too also if you're not a disciple of christ jesus to also it's just a checking uh you know to check where you are to check you know, your heart, even as, you know, not too long ago, God was just, I was speaking about, um, God had us speaking about the heart, you know, checking our heart, you know, the Bible says that the heart is des deceitfully wicked, um, to check our heart, to check our motives, because sometimes we could, you know, think we're operating a certain way, and to think that, okay, you know, we're doing this in, with the right intentions, but our heart is deceiving us, right, so, John 6, um, and we're going to just pray, paraphrase a few stuff. Not paraphrase, but we're not going to read everything. But I would, um, I would urge, um, I would urge everyone just to read, you know, after to read John 6, just the whole chapter, you know, John 6. But John 6, um, verse 52, it says, and I'll just start from here. It says, the Jews began to argue sharply among themselves right they begin to argue sharply among themselves how can this man give us his flesh to eat right and before that like i'm not going to read everything else before he said but what he said what jesus christ said earlier and it's all going to come together what jesus christ said earlier was he when he was speaking to he's right now he's speaking to his disciples not just the 12 but he's speaking to the many other people that was following him at the time, right? And right before he said these words, um, right before the, he said these words, right before the Jews began to argue sharply among themselves, how can we, how can this man give us his flesh to eat, right? Um, Jesus said to them, what Jesus said to them was, eat of me, partake of me, eat of my flesh, drink of my blood. And he was basically saying to him, partake of me, partake of me, partake of me. You could say uh, in a sense of what we kind of are doing now, we're partaking of him, right? You know, we hear the say all the time, let's break bread, you know, in the sense of we're partaking of, this is partaking of Christ Jesus. We're, we're breaking down Christ Jesus in the sense of this is his word. We're reading it. We're, we're gaining understanding from each other as the body of Christ. We're learning from each other. We're, we're pouring into each other. We're receiving from each other. It's, it's the body of Christ. And we are the body of Christ, right? But Christ Jesus is saying, as he said to them earlier, partake of me, right? Partake of me. Eat of my, eat of my flesh, drink of my blood, partake of me. So he, that's what he said to them, right? So this is why the Jews are saying this. This is why I said, then the Jews began to argue argue sharply among themselves how can this man how how you don't have to read any more how right they ask they're asking how they're asking how they're asking how right after that um in verse 53 jesus said to them i tell you the truth right jesus said i tell you the truth unless 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 you, unless you, right? He said, unless you eat the flesh of the son of man and drink of, of his blood, you have no life in you. Unless you partake of me, you have no life. You have no life in you. You won't have no life unless you read my word, unless you spend time with the word, unless you, you know, grow in the word, you have no life because he is the life. He is the bread of life that came down from heaven, right? So this is what he's basically saying to him, right? So backing up a little bit, the Jews argue sharply, right? Um, the Jews argue sharply. And I, I think also too, we could all at some point or even now, you know, look at our lives and be like, we could see ourselves arguing with God whether or not loud or in a, but in our hearts or in our minds, when God tell us to do something, 
when the word tells us to do something, we argue with ourselves. How? Like they said, how? How? How can I do this? How can I stay pure? How can I stay abstinent? How can I, can I stay clean? How can I love this person that hates me? How? How? Right? And, and I mean, that would be okay to say how, if in your heart it's a place of saying how that you may be able to do it and God will show you, but they're just saying, they end it with just how, and they just say, it, it, it's, it's, I can't, it's too hard, right? But Jesus tells them, I tell you the truth, unless you, unless you partake of me, you will not have life, right? And I'm gonna go skip down to 59, right? Right, 59. It says, um, all in chapter six, um, 59, he said, he said this after he said, you know, I tell you the truth, unless you eat of my flesh, eat of the, you know, eat of my flesh, drink of my blood, um, whoever, you know, eats of my flesh, drink of my blood will have eternal life. Um, and he said a few other things that he, you know, this is the bread that came down from heaven. He said a few other things. And he says, it says on 59, he said this while teaching, right? So this is the teacher teaching, the rabbi teaching. He said all these things teaching. And the next verse after that, listen carefully to what it says. The next verse after that, it says verse 60. On hearing this, on hearing it, many of his disciples said this is a hard teaching who can accept it who can accept it this is a hard teaching who can accept it this is a hard teaching who can accept it it's it's you know it's hard how can i you know love my mom when she doesn't love me back or how can i you know love my dad when he forsook me when i was little how can I you love know, my boss when all he do is you know speak down on me? How can I love this person that just they they betrayed me, they left me, they they speak ill of me? How can I love this person? How can I do this? How can I be pure? How can I be holy? How can I grow in God? How can I stop doing this thing that I've been doing for years since I was little? How can I do it? God says, partake of me. That's how he said he says, partake of me. Actually become a disciple with pure heart and pure intentions, actually become a disciple with a pure heart and pure intention. Truly become a disciple that you, that you be, you allow him to be disciplined and you allow him to teach you to be disciplined in the word, to be disciplined in the word, to be disciplined in the word, to be disciplined. Everything God places before you, well, all of our lives are, are different, our walks may be different, but everything we have discipleship university, be disciplined in the things that God has placed before you. We have street ministry, be disciplined in the things that God has placed before you. You have a family, be disciplined with the things that God has placed before you. Learn to be disciplined because everything God places before you, that he's placed before you, he, place, he places it before you. And with the capability and the grace of you being able to do it, he doesn't give you more than you could bear. That's why it's, it's important to be led by the spirit. The Bible says those who are led by the spirit are the sons of God. Because when you're led by the spirit, you you everything that is that is placed before you is 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 placed before you by God. And he gives you nothing, he never gives you more than you could bear. Right? So it says, on hearing this. Many of, listen to what it's saying, on hearing this, many of his disciples said, this is a hard teaching, who can accept it? Aware that his disciples were grumbling. Oh, wait, we're not gonna read that. Well, we can read, aware that his disciples were grumbling about this, Jesus said to them, does this offend you? God is good at asking that question. Have you ever been offended by the word? Have you ever been offended by the word? Have you ever been offended by the word? And we probably have been offended by the word somehow, some way, but the, 
being offense to the being offended to the point of not obeying the word, that's the problem. Allowing offense to lie in your heart that you don't be obedient to the word. That that is the problem. That is the problem, right? And we're gonna go up a little further. So, and it just the key word today is discipline. The key word today is discipline. The key word um, today is discipline and being a disciple of Christ Jesus, right? We know the Bible also says that if you want to be my disciple, if you want to follow me, have to what? Lay down your life, pick up your cross, and follow me. Lay down your life. Lay down your life. That means lay down everything. That means lay down everything. Lay down, lay down your life means lay down everything. Right? So on hearing this, many of the disciples said this is a hard teaching. And we know that the disciples um, followed him no more longer after that. Right? But another um, key point, um, and we, I'm, I'm gonna go back because this, this is another key point that adds on to it. Um, I, I pray. I pray this all make. I pray that is all making sense. I pray that God just gives you know understanding um, to the simplicity of just what God is saying. Just the, being a disciple and being a follower of Christ Jesus, because um, the gospel is is. Is it's it's it is simple. Simple. Um, the hard part may be um, learning how to, you know, continue to walk in it. But it's not by might, not by power, but it's by His Spirit. Right. We're gonna go up to. We're gonna go up to. Um, like I said, we we are actually, for some reason God wanted to do this. We're actually starting from the end moving up to the top, starting from the bottom, move up to the top, right? So right before that, even before he said all these things, right? Even before um, Jesus said, right, all these things, there was, there were his disciples. Like I said, the disciples came to him, right? Um, the disciples came to him, the disciples, you know, like we just read, they said it's a hard thing. How can we eat of your flesh? How can we, how can we, it's, this is too hard. This is too hard of a thing, right? But Jesus spoke all these things about him being the life, of him being the bread of heaven, the bread of life that came out from heaven, of him being our substance to be able to partake of, right? He said all these things. Why he said all these things? Because like I said, as we're going from the bottom up, right before that, these were the same disciples that, that followed him. And we're going to read, it says, it's in John 6, um, 25. We just read John 6, 25. It says, and this is right after all of the same ones Jesus was speaking to, his disciples, you, me, his disciples, his disciples. This is right after um, his disciples were looking for him, right? So, um, it's, is, is question will be, is anyone on this Zoom seeking Christ? Is anyone on this Zoom seeking Christ Jesus? That, that, that's a question. That's a question. Um, that's a question to ask for, for yourself. You know, are you seeking Christ Jesus? Are you seeking Christ Jesus? And I'm pretty sure um, you are. Some are. I'm pretty sure we all. I'm pretty sure all of us on here are seeking Christ Jesus. If we are here on this Zoom. You seeking Christ Jesus at some some capacity, right? But so this is after the. This is being spoken of because they were seeking him, right? This is John six twenty five. 
when they found him. So they found him, right? When they found him on the other side of the lake, they asked, they asked him, rabbi. Rabbi means teacher. Rabbi means teacher. That's what rabbi means. Rabbi just basically means teacher. So they calling him his teacher. Rabbi means teacher. They asked him, rabbi, teacher, when did you get here? When did you get here? Jesus answers 26. I tell you, I tell you the truth. Always speaking the truth. All you do is speak the truth, right? I tell you the truth. You are looking for me, not because you saw miraculous signs, but because you ate the loaves and had your fill. Because you ate the loaves and had your fill. So his disciples, his disciples, right? His disciples are looking for Jesus. His disciples are looking for him, right? You would think, and it, I'm a, all this, the things I'm about to say too, it's just a, a lot of stuff is being said just for reflection for all of us. You know, it's, it's encouragement. It, it's going to be encouraging for some. It's going to be a warning for some. It's going to be, um, you know, revelation for some. It's going to be a few things for different people. But what I know, like I said, discipline, I know what God wants me to say is, is basically, you know, you're looking for Jesus, right? That's good. You're looking for Jesus. Just like these disciples, they were looking for him. <laughs> Just like these disciples, they were looking for him. Just like these disciples, they were looking for him. Praying for God, you know, asking for God, you know, praying to him for, for whatever the case may be, you know, going to church, you know, even coming on Zoom, you know, going to a, the, the church you're going to, you know, for however long you've been going, you've been, you know, pursuing God, which is, which, which is good. You've been pursuing God, right? But God says, this is what God is saying. God says, when they this is when they found him, when some people found him, they asked. Basically, when they found him, they found him, right? It's it's so it's it's it happened. They found him, but then Jesus tells them, "I tell you the truth, you are looking for me, and not because of you seeing miraculous signs, but because you were filled, because you're." And I'll I, I say it in this way, because your flesh was filled, because your flesh was filled, because your flesh was filled. It's, it's a dangerous thing to follow Christ. It's a dangerous thing to follow Christ um, for fleshly things, you know, for, from a place of your own desire. It's a dangerous thing to, you know, um, we hear, you know, you know, apostles say sometimes, you know, some people act like, you know, Jesus is Santa Claus, you know, come to him, give him your wish list. I want this. I want that. And, and then mold the word of God and then mold everything God says in his word to benefit us, to benefit us. Right. But Jesus said, I tell you the truth. <clears throat> You're not looking for me out of pure intentions. You're not looking for me out of pure intentions. You're not looking for me for me. You're not looking for me only, you're only looking for me to fill your flesh, right? <clears throat> to fill your flesh. And we're going to go up. And like I said, I urge, you know, everybody to just read the whole chapter six, um, to read the whole chapter six, <clears throat> to read the whole chapter six and to put into, to put into, um, perspective for some that you know may not know um that may not know the uh this um this story you know for some that may not know the story but I'm pretty sure some you know a lot of people know it but this is the story basically of Jesus feeding the 5000 Jesus feeds the 5000 Jesus feeds the 5000 he feeds the 5000 um basically with five loaves and two fish, right? So he does a sign and wonder. This is before, you know, 
the multitude of people. This is before his disciples too. The same people we've just been speaking about. This is before all of them, right? So he does all of these things. Um, he does all of these things. He feeds them. You know, he does. He, he do what he do. This is what he does. He he does miraculous things, right? He does miraculous things. He does signs and wonders. So he feeds the 5,000 men. He feeds 5,000 men, right? He feeds all of them. 12 baskets are left over from feeding 5,000 men. That's just, they only say men. They only include the men. They're not even including anyone else. So it, it could be over 5,000 for sure. So they feed 5,000 men, right? And there's 12 baskets left over. Right now, this whole thing, this whole story is coming to full circle now. This whole story is coming to full circle now. Um, and it's a lot of question, questions. It's, it's what has God, what has God ever done for you? Has God, has God ever did any, you know, miraculous signs, you know, or wonders or, or you, have you ever even seen, you know, God do a miraculous thing in someone else's life that you were close to. So you've seen it, you've seen it. You know, you've seen your your your, your best friend uh, get married. You've seen um, your, 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 um, your um, parents, um, you know, get blessed by God. You've seen a whole bunch of things, right? God's hand, you know, working in those ways, right? That's what they seen. So 12 baskets, and I'm going to keep saying, make sure you read, just read, when you get to it, just read chapter six, read chapter six, just read the whole chapter six, 12 baskets left over, and the whole key word of today is just discipline, discipline, it's discipline, it's discipline, right, being a disciple of Christ Jesus, but it's also God is saying, he wants he's, he's checking he wants you to check yourself yeah i mean he didn't know he, he's not he wants you to check yourself we're all checking us he wants us to examine ourselves and check ourselves are we actually disciples of christ jesus are we actually living a life of discipleship are we actually being are we actually allowing god to disciple us right are we actually allowing god to disciple us because god he's the rabbi right and God uses men. God uses men. But ultimately, he's using these men. And we're being, being discipled by Christ Jesus, right? So full circle of the whole story. They found him, right? Now they were, they were looking for him, right? This is after, you know, he feeds the 5,000. We know the story of the 5,000 after he feeds the 5,000. Now the disciples go to the other side of the lake. Um, after, um, and it was a, a key thing. After, um, this is right before they left us. I want to read some other stuff too. After, so it says, after the people, this is um, verse 14. Well, I'll, I'll just start from verse 12, it's chapter 6, verse 12, right? Chapter 6, verse 12. When they had all, when they had all had enough to eat, he said to his disciples, gather the pieces that are left over, um, let nothing be wasted. So, like I said, they they gathered um everything left over. Verse 14, after the people saw the miraculous sign that Jesus did, they began to say, Surely this is the prophet who is to come into the world. Jesus knowing that they intended to come and make him king by force, withdraw again to the mountain by himself, right? So Jesus knowing that they intended to come and make him um, king by force. After 14, after the people saw the miraculous signs, so after the people saw the miraculous signs, as Jesus did, they began to say, surely this is the prophet. So they wanted to basically make him king. They basically wanted to, you know, exalt him before his time, right? Or you probably want to say, I guess, glorify him before his time, whatever case may be. But as we have been listening and reading, 
even that, and even as that was not God's timing, but we know that, but even with that, their hearts already were exposed as we read, their hearts were exposed. What were their hearts exposed to? They didn't care about Jesus. Their hearts were exposed to, they didn't care too much about Jesus. What they really cared about was that they seen that this guy can do things for them. Can do things for them. They seen that this man just fed 5,000 people. They seen that, that, that God is able to do things for them. Right, not just do things and okay, you know, um, you know, do things for the kingdom, build the kingdom here, heaven on earth, you know, do these things to help people. No, it was they seen that they that Christ Jesus can do these things and they wanted to they wanted to get close to God, close to Jesus for their desire, for their gain and for their sake. Right. So um now back to where we are as it goes full circle. They went to the other side. Um, that's why they were looking for him, right? That's why they were looking for him. So I know, the, like I said, I'm just uh, reiterate, just want to reiterate, basically replay and say the same things over and over again. Um, to say the same thing over again that we just may get it because I know I God didn't want me to say too much besides what He gave me. I can only say what He gave me, and the word one word was discipline, dealing with discipleship, being a disciple of Christ Jesus. The Bible says we we know to be a disciple of Christ Jesus. It says if you want to be my disciple, you must lay down your life, pick up your cross, and follow me. Right? That's good. That's what it is. But God's even going even deeper now. Before because some people have so-called, it could happen, and it happened, it could happen to all of us at some point, and if we, God can reveal it to us, but we can so-called lay down our lives, so-called lay down our lives, so-called seek after God, right? But what are we seeking after God for? What, what are we seeking after God for? Because if our motives and intents is not corrected, and, and listen, if our motive and intents are not corrected now, before it's too late, we easily become like the disciples that we just read about where it says, this is a hard thing. And it says in the Bible that they walked with Christ Jesus no longer. They walked with Christ Jesus no longer. They walked with him no longer because it was a hard thing, right? Or, you, or, or if things are not corrected, when we finally get, <laughs> when we finally get what we actually been seeking and going after. Because there's certain things, and this is an examination to our hearts, there's certain things that could be in our hearts and we, we mingle and we mix it with Christ Jesus. And we, and we tell ourselves, um, we tell ourselves, you know, this is, you know, I'm going after Christ Jesus. Like, I love God. I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm seeking after him. But things are mingled in and, and perverted and tainted in our hearts. Well, it's not so much we're really going after Christ Jesus. We're really going after Christ Jesus because we've seen God. We, I seen, I seen, I seen God just marry my best friend. I seen God just make this person business blow up. I seen God just bless this person with money. I seen God, you know, give this person a child I've been waiting for, whatever the case may be. I seen God do these things, right? Seeing God do these things. So now we become, we could easily become like these disciples that tasted, like that seen, right? These disciples that seen, they actually that's the more, that's the, 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 the even dangerous part in the place, place of you should be. They seen, this is them seeing this now. They said they seen the miraculous signs. They seen God do this. They seen, so this is nothing to do with who Christ Jesus said he is. This is nothing to do with him being the son of God. This is nothing to do with, to them. They seen this, they're not, they're not, they're not tying 
the signs and wonders to this is the son of God. Right? No, they're just trying, they seen these signs and wonders and they see and saying, we're going to go after him because we've seen what he can do. But they're going after him for their own selfish desires and selfish needs. Examination. Warning. This is the warning. This is a warning. This is a warning. And this is, an, this is a warning. This is a place for examination. Warning and a place for examination. Because a good mindset you could to always have, and I, I learned to always have that mindset, is you, you always learn to remain humble and to not look at, because you know what people do sometimes, people can even read scripture or look at someone else's life and they look at people and they, or look at scripture and be like, he did that, or why did he fell, or they did that, how did they, A, B, and C, boom, no. No, because it could easily happen to <laughs> me, it could easily happen to anybody. It could, easy, it could easily happen to anybody. We're, we're men just like, you know, everyone else, right? They walked with Christ Jesus no longer. They walked with Christ Jesus no longer. They walked with him no longer. They seek after him. They seek after him. And and here's, a, here's, here's something that's... that's um, that's uh, actually it's something that's that's beautiful to see too, because even as uh, it's God just wanted me, like I said, the key word discipleship and just to to speak God's heart to you, to speak God's heart to you. But here's a beautiful thing too, right? Because even as it says, chapter six, verse twenty-five, when they found him on the other side, right, and they asked him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus, Jesus answered. Y'all may think that's like not Jesus answered. See, sometimes the, the enemy will trick you. <laughs> the enemy, listen, because sometimes the enemy will trick you to get offended, to um, harden your heart towards things people say, to receive offense, to receive anger, to receive all these things that will hinder you from hearing God trying to speak to you something that's in truth. All right? Because this is what love looks like. What people when we understand, like, God didn't have to say this. God didn't have to say, I tell you the truth. You are looking for me, not because you saw miraculous signs, but because you ate the loaves. He didn't have, he didn't have to say that. Because you know what he just did when he says that? It's like flipping on the light switch. It's, it's bringing revelation. It's revealing their heart to them. Right? This is what God would do. Even now, this is even now, this is what God is doing. God can reveal God's revealing your heart to yourself. Whether now, little by little, or even later on, that I urge y'all to read chapter six and just let the let the word sit. Like get in a room, get quiet, and just meditate and let the word sink in. Let what God is saying, let what God is saying to you today sink in. Right? Let it sink in, right? Because this is what God does in his love that he will speak because because this is a key turning moment right now what's the key turning moment right the key turn moment is chapter um chapter 6 verse 26 jesus answering that's the key that's a key turning moment it's a key turning moment right because he says i tell you the truth you are looking for me not because of signs that he's exposing Right, so he, so in this moment, he's exposing, he's revealing. This is a key turning point. Why? Because obviously, whether you knew it or not, you were blind. If you were blind, whatever the case may be, he's, you can't have no excuse after this moment, because he's telling you, he's telling you now. He's telling you, you wasn't, you haven't been seeking me, for me, you have, you have been seeking me, because of something I, of of, of something that you want me to do for you. Or because something I did for you before, and you and you just want me to you just want me to do it. But once once I once I do it, you you're gone. You back to your old ways. Once I once I get you out of the situation, you back to your old ways, right? But this is a key turning moment and key turning point. Why? Because he's in love. This is what he's doing. He's shining the light. He's revealing your heart. 
because the key turning moment is right here because some people could say, and some people could see and listen to what God is saying. You are right. Because obviously, we know God don't lie. He's telling the truth. So the key turning moment right here, like I said, is because you could either take heed to what God is saying. Oh, God, forgive me. A, B, and C, this, forgive me, right? And turn and let God deal with the heart more and let God remove the hindrances and let God, you know, reveal things that, you know, you may, you know, um, remove from that way of, of going about seeking Christ, right? Laying down your life, picking up your cross, or you can not take heed to what he's saying and be like these disciples that walked with him no longer saying, this is a hard thing. This is a hard thing, right? So that's why I say it's a turning. That's why I say it's a turning moment. That's why I say it's a turning moment. Um, so discipline, discipleship, discipline, discipleship, discipline, discipleship. Yeah, it's, I, I would say, what's the, um, if I was to say, okay, who's the first person that comes to your mind when you think of discipline? Or you think of someone being disciplined? I, I just want to see, like, who was, can someone, like, think of anybody that comes to your mind when you think of discipline or you think of when you, when someone, when you, someone says the word discipline, who comes to your mind? Someone says Jesus, like, like, and this is, and I, and, and I'm gonna say this prof, I'm, I'm gonna say this too, athletes. That's good. Cause I want to say, I, and it's not like a church thing. I'm just saying in general discipline, Kobe, that's my, that's my boy right there, Kobe, but discipline, it's not think who's the first person that comes to your mind when you think of this man, it's even in the world, you could think of people in the world, you could think of the Bible, you could think of anybody, right? And you, you know, you know, army, that's, it's the, someone says, you know, the army, someone says athletes. Um, and um, these are all good. These are all good, good answers. Cause I could, you know, I could um, relate to all these answers and understand like it's true. Well, we obviously, you know, we know Jesus is the ultimate, you know, the ultimate when it comes to that prof. I could testify that we, for the people that do know prof of power, you know, um, very disciplined man. Um, and we, for the people that um, still are with them in that, uh, the area of eating, um, you know, you know, you know how important discipline is even when it comes to eating, right? Um, athletes, you say Kobe, say the army, right? Even when you think of, we could just, we could go to, uh, you know, we could go to athletes, right? We go to athletes, um, or the army. Um, you know, you think of athletes and like, we say we think of discipline, discipline. If you want to correlate to anybody, even when we speak about athletes, anybody that's great, they were disciplined, right? They were they were disciplined. From football to Tom Brady, the man got about five, I don't even know, six rings, the most ever in NFL history. I don't, six, I think, I don't know what you got, but he got a lot. <laughs> Super Bowl rings, right? You think of Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan, you think of, you know, all these people and players from different things, they, they were disciplined. You think of the army, man, they, they have, you know, um, different, you know, Army, Navy SEAL, they have these people where they're, if you, if you was to even go on, you know, Google and even look up, you know, Navy SEAL, the Army and their training, it's, it's, it's severe. It's tough because it's, it's a place of discipline, right? And the whole point of me even saying that was just really to say, the people, these people that we are naming, they're elite especially wherever they discipline that they become they become someone you can rely on wherever wherever it may be the army 
think of athletes was in football, basketball, Jesus in every across the whole board, we could rely on him because he's disciplined. He's disciplined, right? Um, Prophet Barber dealing with, you know, dieting and food, discipline, you know, discipline. This and discipline, being disciplined brings results. Discipline brings results. Discipline brings results, right? Discipline brings results, right? And tying, and we're going into tying this all, tying this together right here, this part of discipline, right? We're called to be his disciples, first and foremost, before anything else. That's the, that is, that's the first step in walking with Christ, discipleship. It's the first step, discipleship, right? If you want to be my disciple, you must lay down your life, pick up your cross and follow me, right? So these people we name and some people probably can name some other people and, and naming other things and just people being disciplined and the benefits of being disciplined from, from billionaires to millionaires to people that were disciplined. Um, anybody, you think of Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, these people were disciplined. Waking up a regiment every day, doing this, doing discipline, right? We're called to be disciples. So we're called to be disciplined in the word of God. We're called to be disciplined in the word of God, disciplined in the word of God. What is more precious and what is more important than the word of God? What's more beneficial than the word of God, right? There's nothing. The word of God is life. It's, it's, it's substance. The word of God is life. The word of God is Christ Jesus himself. Christ Jesus is wisdom. He's full of wisdom, insight, revelation, power. He's, he's everything we need, right? God's calling us to be disciplined in the word of God. The way our life looks sometimes and the things we may go through is because we're not disciplined in the word of God. Because we're not disciplined in the word of God. And hear what God is saying today. Hear what God is saying today. Because if you don't take heed to it now, you it will... What will come, you will know why, right? Why you weren't able to endure, why it even came. It's because what's so important about why God wants to be disciplined in the word of God, because when storm comes, when things come, when trial comes, when temptation comes, like we were talking about Sunday, temptation, dealing with temptation, right? He always needs a way of escape, right? And all these things, speaking, speaking about temptation, but when you're disciplined in the word of God, you can overcome all of these things because you're disciplined in the word of God. It's not going to be because of this much. Oh, it's, it's too much. I can't take. No, I'm disciplined. God is teaching us to be disciplined in the word of God. Right. Um, so um, that's 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 really that's really all I know. God just want me to speak about being disciplined. Right, being a disciple of Christ Jesus, right, truly, because at the end of the day, this God is God's good, and at the end of the day, He's speaking to each and every one of us. He's speaking to all, all of us, right, as individuals, right, because it could be the, the main person everyone could probably think is as as disciplined as they may be, but they could not be, right. I say in the sense of we know the Bible says God knows the heart. God knows the heart. God knows the heart. I mean, we heard of stories plenty of, we heard, I'm pretty sure we all heard of some stories plenty of times of this guy who used to walk with Christ 20 years and all of a sudden, yeah, he's not a believer. He renounced it. It's in, that's in, it's in, it's impossible. If you actually really were walking with Christ, it's impossible. You, you're not going to, you're not going to deny Christ. It's impossible. But that's the illustration that's showing that somebody wasn't going, somebody wasn't going after Christ for him, but going after Christ for what they can, what he can do for them. But God is saying, examine, let's all examine our hearts, let's all examine ourselves, let's all Get, get serious, like, you know, get serious, get for, it's your life, it's your life, I mean, it's your life, no one else got to live your life but you, right, 
you live in, you live in, you know, in your body and you walk on this earth and you live your life. So the thing is, God is saying, you know, check yourself, you know, and God is, you know, speaking to everyone on here. However, he's speaking to them. Like I said, this it's a warning. It's it's revelation. It's a warning to some. Or to all, it's revelation. It's you know also um, encouragement to the people that have been walking in Christ. It's 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 a, God is saying a lot of these things, but take heed to what God is saying. Take heed to what God is saying. Take heed to what God is saying because it's a sad and scary thing to be so called walking with Christ and then not walk with Him no longer, or even to maybe realize you're not even walking with him anymore or you've never been walking with him. I'm not anymore. Because obviously, to break it down, to make it you know simple, these disciples were not really walking with him, were they? They were not really, they were not per se really um, walking with Christ Jesus. So they were walking on their own journey. Obviously, as you can see, because they walked and went wherever they wanted to go and they left whenever they wanted to leave. That's their own journey. Christ Jesus, when you're walking with him, you go where he goes. You follow where he goes. You don't go where you want to go. You don't go where it feels good. You don't go that feeling, feeling, no, that's how the devil deceives people. That's one of one the ways he deceives you by feelings. We don't, we're not led by feelings, we're led by the spirit of God. And even not by sight, not by sight, but by, by faith. And faith comes by hearing the word of God. So hear what God is saying today. God is saying. Become a true disciple of Christ Jesus. And being a disciple of Christ Jesus means you have to be disciplined in the word. Being disciplined in the word means you have to be reading this Bible. Reading this Bible. If you reading this, if you if you have been walking with Christ for, for, for more than three years, you should at least be spending no less than an hour with him, at least reading the Bible. This is this is not like. This is not a joke. It's not a joke. It's not just for you and your life depending on it, but it's for your family, people that's connected to you. I'm, this is just the, it's people's connected to you. It's the Bible. The, the Bible is what, what the Bible says, waiting for the manifestation of the sons, the manifestation. That means the manifestation of the sons, the manifestation of the sons. That means it's a process, the manifestation of the sons, manifestation of the sons of God. They're waiting for them because the sons of God, the sons of God are, are, are different. The sons of God are the ones that, that walk with Christ, that are, are matured in Christ, that have been matured in Christ, that have their heart, you know, the most important thing, they have their heart in the right place towards Christ Jesus. Not for nothing else, because they already gave their life to Christ Jesus. They already laid down their life, pick up the cross, and they follow them, right? So... That's all. Um, that's really all I want to say. Um, I also just want to, you know, like I said, I kind of said earlier, I, I just, you know, urge, you know, even after the Zoom, um, you know, just meditate, you know, read, read chapter six, meditate on what God has said, meditate on what God has said, consume what God has said, like receive it in your spirit, not just, not in, you know, in emotion or intellect, but in your spirit. Sit there and let it get in your spirit, because once it gets in your spirit, it's 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 it remains, right? So let it get there. Let it let it get there. So, um, um, that's about it. I I, I don't know if anybody I asked if anybody have any questions or anything. I guess I could ask that. I don't know. Or if anybody, I, any questions, or if anybody just wanted to say anything before we close out. Okay. All right, so I guess no one got any um questions or remarks they wanted to say or or add. Good. Um so yeah, I just you know I pray that everybody just you know take heed to what God is saying, to what God has said. Um just to you know, examine and examine. 
and really allow God to discipline you because it's only for your benefit. It's only for your benefit because what's to come, if you're not disciplined, once you step in, what God knows is coming your way and you're not disciplined in the word of God, it's not going to be good. It's not going to be good. It's not going to be good. And it's not going to be good. And and all that to say also, too, is something I know I always hear people say, um, and they say in a certain way, they always say, God, don't make mistakes. You know, and a lot of times people say something like that, and they say it in the sense of um, someone died, you know, you, you know, someone died early, case may be, or something happened, you know, like God don't make mistakes. Yeah, he, he doesn't make mistakes, but you understand we all have free will. We all have free will and things do happen on this earth that with everybody having free will, with us having free will, right? Take heed to what God is saying. Take heed to what God is saying because if we don't become, if we're not disciplined in the word of God, what is to come, we won't be able to stand in what's to come. That, that trial, that temptation, you, we won't be able to stand because we didn't take heed to what God said exposing ourselves or taking heed to what he said so that we, we you know, be more diligent in the things of God and the word of God, that we become more disciplined in his word so that that that's that's basically it that's basically it um and i guess we could there's nobody like i I guess i see no one so no question nothing to say so we could uh, pray out have somebody pray out um i don't know i guess if anybody want to pray out um anybody want to pray out you could just raise your hand if i want to pray out Okay, um, dressed in modesty. Yeah. Hey, Gamal, it's me, Max. Oh, Max. What's up, Max? How you doing? Not much. It, I'm right here on Naomi's phone, but she's right here with me. Um, that's okay. I'll go ahead and uh, I'm pray us out. Okay, okay so, um, Father God, we thank you for this word that was brought forth today, Lord. We thank you for the man of God that was chosen to speak, that, that was chosen to bring the word forward, God. We thank you that he was ready and able, even at a moment's notice, Lord, that he'd be an example for us, God. He'd be an example for us as well, that we'd be able, even when we're not prepared, Lord, that, that when you come like a thief in the night, Lord, that we also can study and show ourselves approved, just like Ma has just done, Lord. I thank you for the man of God right now. I pray that this word that we have resonates within us, Lord, that we not forget that we are discipleships and within being a disciple that we must be disciplined lord we must be steadfast on your word god i'm so thankful for your word lord i thank you for all you've done for us lord all the things that we see and even thankful for the things that you do behind the scenes lord that you don't make public or don't make known for us god i pray for forgiveness of sins lord for those sins both known and unknown god i pray for the body of believers that we become stronger in your word thanks to this lord we give you honor we give you glory and give you praise in Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. Amen, amen. And already before we close, I just want to say one thing to uh, God. It's having just placed on my heart. Um, be encouraged. To everybody, be encouraged, man. Everybody, be encouraged. Um, be encouraged. Be encouraged. So that's that's basically it. So um, y'all have a blessed one. See y'all when I see y'all. <laughs> All right. Adios.